What's happening on Artscapers? Today we're going to talk about synthetic bass, why and where you can use it. Let's get into this. So in my business, I love synthetic bass. This reduces the amount that you need to excavate and it makes laying pavers so much easier in the process. The main reason why I like it is because we do a lot of tight access projects. So with that, sometimes we can't even get a piece of equipment into the backyard to do our excavation for us, which means a lot of labor. But with our synthetic base, we can reduce that excavation by at least half. That means with a typical project, we would do six inch base, one inch bedding layer, and then our pavers of two and three eighths of an inch. But with the synthetic base, we're doing a one inch bedding layer, three quarters inch for that synthetic base, and then our two and three eighths of an inch pavers. So our excavation goes from at least 10 inches all the way down to about four inches. And the reason why you would use synthetic base beyond just saving you in labor is that it spreads the load of the patio over a wider area. It also insulates the ground below it so it's less susceptible to freeze thaw cycles which is perfect here where I'm from in Toronto here. But not to mention in the laying process it's so much easier you just need to screed out, lay your paver base panels and then you can walk everywhere that you would want to on your project on those paver base panels. Stage pavers closer to where you'll be laying them which makes it a lot easier because you can't do that with any other base where you would screed you can't walk on your screed layer afterwards without ruining it so these are a few reasons why you would use synthetic base but we got a full video unpacking this completely if you want to watch that the link will be in the description below for it. But the applications of synthetic base are important to cover here. We'll cover where you would use it as well as where you would not use it. And starting with where I at least like to use it, I like to use it on on-grade patios that we can build using the existing grade of the backyard that we are laying on top of. That means that we don't have to change the grade at all, build a raised patio or anything like that. So we are able to use the existing grade to lay our patio on. This is the easiest and most suitable application for synthetic base in my opinion and almost any project that we come across that is like this will definitely use them. Another excellent application is side walkways and this is because we would not opt for an open graded base for a side walkway just because it's right up against the foundation. We don't want water to be settling right beside that foundation as it percolates down. So a synthetic base really helps in being able to direct water away from that foundation because when water does go through any jointing material it hits those paver base panels and it'll follow the slope away from the foundation from those paver base panels as well as there's little drainage holes in those panels that allows water to also percolate through it. And now you can also use paver base panels for walls that are under 18 inches in height, gas fire features, as well as steps under 18 inches in height. Now to cover walls, I have never used synthetic base for walls personally, just because when we're doing a wall, we're typically doing a patio with the wall. And when that patio is on a slope and those paver base panels follow that slope, we don't want our wall to be on that same slope. So typically we don't even use the paver base panels for walls along with our patios. We'll just do a traditional or open graded base for those walls and then lay out our paver base panels for our patio. I think it would be a little bit of a pain to have to screed a little bit of concrete sand on top of the paper base panels to lay out that wall completely level, especially if it is a longer wall, that would be a complete pain because eventually our concrete sand layer on top of the paver base panels would be too high for that wall to sit on. So walls I actually won't do on paver base panels, but fire features are a perfect use case for paver base panels. And that's not wood burning fire features, it must be gas burning. And what we do is we lay out our patio and then we cut out an area for our fire feature and then we use concrete sand to be able to level that fire feature. It's not as long as a typical retaining wall or anything like that, so it's much easier to have to level with that concrete sand on top of those paver base panels. And also steps, I would maybe do steps on paver base panels, I haven't yet, but in the right situation with a backyard patio, with less than two steps or 18 inches in height, I would probably opt for paver base panels for those steps. Now reasons why I would not use paver base panels. If it is a raised patio, I'm not going to use paver base panels. We talked about this in the last video where I would be using open graded base. So we're gonna have to build up that patio anyways, along with excavating all the organic material like the sod and the topsoil of that area. 
So when we're bringing in a lot of material to be able to build up that raised patio, it doesn't make sense for us to spend the money on actually putting those paver base panels into that open graded base. The cost savings isn't there and we are very confident with our open graded base installs. So we don't need the added benefit of having those synthetic base panels on top of our open graded base. Additionally, we're not going to use synthetic base panels for a project where if we dig down, we're digging more than five inches of topsoil. This rarely happens, but it has happened to me in the past where we start digging and we're just digging out a lot of organics or worst case scenario, some of the tree stump that needed to come out on one of our projects. So in that case, we had to remove a lot of organic material. And when we're doing that, we're probably gonna opt for an open graded base if applicable. And once again, just like a raised patio, we're very confident with our open graded base systems. So we're not going to spend the money on using paver base panels. And that brings us to the front yard and with front walkways, we're not going to be using paver base panels because typically we're tying that into a driveway. So we'll try to match what that base material is to what the base material is for that driveway. Typically it's a dense graded base. So we will use a dense graded base for our front walkway installs. And if it's a raised front walkway install, we'll treat that just like a raised patio and install an open graded base system. And then finally driveways we do not use paver base panels for driveways because they're not rated for driveway installations they are only rated for pedestrian traffic use only that being said there is a new -er product on the market that is a synthetic base material made a little bit differently than the compressed polypropylene sheets that we see with typical synthetic bases. These are more like a grid type plastic product that's snapped together and they have a smaller footprint. I'm anxious to try this on a driveway project and I'm really hopeful that it does work out because it does also minimize the amount of excavation needed for that driveway. And since we're talking about applications, when it comes to edge restraint, I'm going to stick with a plastic edge restraint with the anchor nails that come with that edge restraint for that to fasten to the synthetic base. I think that's an awesome option and I will always use this. We have not used concrete edge restraint for our synthetic base, but to do that, you would just cut the paver base flush with the edge of the pavers and then install your concrete edge restraint from there. I still just think that that plastic edge restraint with the anchor screws are the best option for edge restraint for synthetic base. And then when it comes to jointing compound, I will opt for a polymeric sand as long as the conditions are right and we are installing it step by step to the T. But I have been using a semi-permeable jointed compound that lets the water go right through it. It is installed wet, so it is a very viable product for synthetic base, and I have been enjoying it. So I'll continue to try to use that for synthetic base. So those are my use cases for synthetic base or paver base panels. Have you ever used paver base panels? Have you ever used synthetic base? Let me know in the comment section below. Where do you use it? Where do you like to use it? Where do you not like to use it? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna learn more about the installation of interlocking concrete pavement or segmental retaining walls, we have courses on those available in our members only platform. And along with that members only platform is also our headquarters software, which will help you streamline processes in your business. So if you wanna learn more about that, link is in the description below. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.